Before we say anything at all, I want to repeat my um, heartfelt and sincere condolences uh, to the Bush family. Uh, I knew uh, President Bush. I knew him as Vice President Bush uh, when I worked for Reagan. I ran a lot of errands for Vice President Bush, and it was a great pleasure. One of the things he used to do, just a small anecdote, I know it's a ton of things today and so forth. Uh, if he asked you to write a memo or something, say he's going on TV someplace or going on radio shows in the Northwest, and you gave him a bunch of bullets, when he came back, he'd call you into his office. Uh, OMB, where I worked, was on one side of the building, uh, and the vice president's uh, group was on another. And he'd sit you down and thank you. He would actually thank you. When I was whatever I was, 31 years old, I was a Reagan Cub Scout, and I've never forgotten that. And of course, um, uh, President George W. Bush is an old and personal friend of mine, so I just want to get the condolences out because um, Papa Bush was a great man, in my opinion. Uh, look, Ambassador Lighthizer is going to be an absolute, I, the word in charge, we've always had a team. Uh, Lighthizer is a fabulous negotiator and a friend of mine, and I'm sure he will uh, be deeply involved. Nobody knows the details. And you got to remember, too, I, I think an important part of this, uh, Eamon, is the enforcement mechanisms. Uh, now, I think Secretary Mnuchin is going to be absolutely a key player, too, as U.S. Treasury Secretary uh, and others. Uh, and others might, like myself will help advise on the policies. But one, one thing I want to make clear, the, in, in our meetings, and but we had private meetings with Lighthizer, Mnuchin and I, with um, Vice Premier uh, Liu He. Uh, we had two private meetings before the dinner. And of course, we would report to President Trump after those private meetings. But the Vice Premier said several times they expected to move immediately on these new commitments. That word immediately kept cropping up. And I say that because I, I believe Ambassador Lighthizer is going to be in charge of, um, shall we say, enforcement and monitoring and timetables. Uh, there's nobody better than him in the business. And I'm sure he will keep uh, try to keep China on track. They literally can start today. They literally can start today. You said in the interview that you just completed a minute ago that uh, China has reneged on deals in the past. What gives you more encouragement this time around, and specifically what gives you more encouragement? Well, this is the furthest and most specific we've ever come. I mean, it's a good question. The history here uh, with China promises is not very good, and um, we know that. And in fact, the uh, you know, since I got in here the last... Uh, Eight or nine months and, you know, from Beijing's trip on, uh, we've all been very disappointed. However, I will say this, President Xi has never been this involved. I mean, the presentation he gave to President Trump and the rest of us at dinner Saturday night was unbelievable, remarkable. And the chemistry between him and President Trump was also uh, remarkable. President Trump has been saying all along that he has a good relationship with Xi. I, I've never seen Mr. Uh, President Xi up close and personal. I saw it Saturday night. Um, it is a very interesting relationship. I, I think President Xi, therefore, is being candid and truthful. The level of detail is important. We heard things we never heard before. So I'm hopeful. Co color me hopeful, please. Again, other, you know, we'll see. But I, I will say this, they cannot slow walk this, stall this, meander this. Their word, immediate. So I expect to see, uh, c let's say, confirming results uh, as soon as possible. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. I, I was saying, when do you expect to see those confirming results? They called a truce on those tariffs that were supposed to set in in January. How long are you, you willing to wait for a deal to firm up before those tariffs would go on track? Well, the president said he'll suspend it for three months, so that's kind of the window, if you will. In terms of negotiating the various details uh, and commitments on the structural issues, right? These are the IP theft, uh, forced tech transfer, which is huge to us, IP th cyber hacking and cyber security, ownership issues, licensing issues. We would like to see progress quote-unquote immediately on all of them and um, 
President Xi indicated, uh, large numbers of transactions, you know, regarding energy and agriculture and industrial, uh, I'm going to call them commodities, they could be uh, final goods. Uh, uh, these are private sector transactions. But uh, uh, Vice Premier Liu He said to us several times, these are private transactions, not government purchases, that's important, and will be accompanied by tariff reductions. That is so important, you understand? That means you go on and on and on. That means if they follow through and make good on their commitments, that American export sales will boom to China because we are the most competitive country in the world. We have the strongest economy and we have new incentives put in, you know, taxes and deregulation by President Trump. So my point is, I hope we see that the tariffs and the commercial transactions soon. Did you get progress with China coming in a series of incremental agreements like the one that we saw in Argentina or one big sweeping deal that addresses all those structural things you mentioned at once? Uh, I'm not the lead negotiator. I think that at the end of 90 days, they have to show significant progress. How's that? Did, did you, are you comfortable with individual deals that address these things individually? Or are you yeah, I, 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 yes, I am. I, there'll be what you call individual deals. Look at it by topic. You know, you've, you've, got, you've got tariff reduction, larger exports, larger purchases on their side. You've got the various technology issues, cybersecurity issues, the so-called structural things, which are so terribly important. So it's, it's all of a piece, but yeah, there are separate categories inside that piece. That's the best I could tell you. Look, President Trump, make it very clear, is our lead negotiator. I Really, that was, uh, Eamon, I'll go back to your question. I mean, nothing will happen without President Trump. And President Trump, by the way, has really been very involved in the details of this. I mean, we had many meetings in Argentina. That's why we're all so tired. Hang on. I got to do the best I can. Yes, sir. You said that the history of Chinese promises so far has been disappointing. How confident are you that in 90 days there will be a deal? We'll see. That's all I can say. I, I think the level of commitment, the level of detail, has never been uh, better from them. And by the way, a small but significant factor, President Xi has never been involved in that kind of detail. And that's huge. So at the dinner, and I've never seen President Xi up close and personal, at that dinner, uh, he gave the pitch for China, not his aides. He was the policy guy. He was the detail guy. As was President Trump. They were so both well prepared and they showed that. Back and forth, back and forth. That's the chemistry that I saw between the two. And I thought it was fascinating, but also really important. So, uh, I don't, it's hard to predict. I'll just say we've come further than we ever have before. But, but this will be monitored you know, for enforcement purposes very carefully. That's all I can say. You speak a lot about the chemistry between two leaders. Did they actually talk about the grand vision that China wants in the future for example, the Made in China Green Deal and all of this stuff? Actually, I think, I don't recall specifically. Uh, somehow, I, it was either the President Xi or Vice Premier Liu He who repeated that to them, the 2025 thing wasn't really as important as other people thought. But we, we didn't go into any detail on that, I, I can't say. Listen, Barry, yes. what, Barry, what are the, Hang on one second, I'm coming to you. What are the non-negotiables for the U.S. as it is negotiating with China? What are China's non-negotiables? Well, I haven't heard non-negotiables yet. We have, uh, you know, the outlines of a number of key areas. And... At this point, I think President Trump wants 100% of them. He but wants 100% of them. So, at this point, there are so I don't, nothing's off the table. In our, in our view, nothing's off the table. Yes. Larry, can you tell us what, first of all, the auto tariffs, what level has China committed to lowering them to? And what assurances have they given to make you believe that they're really going to follow through with them? We, you know, this one, Vivian, right? This one, um, to me, actions are everything. I come back to this immediacy thing. Um, 
we've they've got to move quickly on all the fronts. Now that doesn't mean we have to complete everything, but we want to see. I mean, from their own, they they're the ones who use the word immediate. Uh, Vice Premier uh, again, Liu He, who said this, and um, and I believe President Xi may have said it. I don't recall, but yeah, just let's move. Well, they're going to roll back their auto tariffs. I assume they're going to roll them all the way back. But that's an assumption, Vivian. I can't say with specificity, but that's got to be part of the deal. We, we know that. See, here's a case where uh, actions speak louder than words. So we will be monitoring everything. And again, I think in terms of you know the scorecards and the monitoring, uh, Ambassador Lighthizer is going to play an absolutely key role. There's Wait. nobody better than him in, the, in that business. Nobody better. Just a couple no, no, more. No, 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 no. Did you get specific yes. dollar amounts um, sure. in terms of the goods purchases that would be made? And does that include liquefied natural gas? Yes. But like actual specific dollar amounts that are going to be? Yes, we got. I, I'm just going to call them ballpark because remember, these are private sector transactions. Uh, yeah, it was over well over a trillion dollars of commitments. Well over a trillion dollars. I think Secretary Mnuchin this morning pegged it at 1.2 trillion. But again, these things depend on market conditions, as you can imagine. Uh, you know, consumer demands, the state of the economies. Uh, the one thing that's really important to me, at least, is reducing the tariffs on these items. That, to me, is that's a quote structural change, along with. Re- reducing non-tariff barriers. What's a non-tariff barrier? A license. Okay, that's really important. We've got to see that. Any market openings would be great for the United States, as I said, in our export sales and our economy and our workforce. I think it will also be great for China because they'll get the best goods possible. Um, market openings are crucial. Remember, President Trump, as a trade reformer, has emphasized for many, many months, as soon as I stepped in, put foot in this building, he wants a world of zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, and zero subsidies. And he continues to talk about that. You know, that's his goal. And I believe President Xi is amenable to those goals. That's the whole point of these discussions. But we will see. We will see. I don't want to fork you. Know, how about forecasts? We get action to speak a lot of words. Larry, one, one, question one more on thing. Yes, Last ma'am. One. Are you going to meet tomorrow with the German auto CEO like uh, Mercedes and Volkswagen and uh, BMW? And what do you expect from them? Uh, we have some meetings scheduled with the German car companies. Can you just shed a little bit of light on what the expectations are? I cannot. I cannot. But it's always good to meet with German automakers. We meet with American automakers. We meet with Japanese automakers. And that's all I can say on that. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it very, very much. How are you feeling after the long trip? How's your health? Uh, I feel great. Uh, a little bit tired. My bones ache. <laughs> my heart is good. And my spark plugs are working. <laughs> Thank you for asking, sir.